there was a lot of interaction, experimental interaction between behavior genetics, neurogenetics, and molecular genetics. That it, it was... Synergy the, and complementarity. Yeah, there, there you go. So it was necessary to do things. I remember a ringing phrase you once stated, to bioassay a piece of DNA that had to do with this clock gene you mentioned, the period gene. And to bioassay it meant behavioral studies. But of course, it was utterly essential to be able to get at the gene at the molecular level, which was not easy. It was conceptually difficult to try to simply approach it at the molecular level because These were the nobody could have had a clue at that point what the gene might be lying. These were the early days, the very early days of recombinant DNA. So we were flying by the seat of our pants a bit, too, from the technical point of view. That's correct. In fact, uh, a very well-known Drosophila geneticist who didn't work on behavior or the like, <clears throat> when we, when our labs together took this piece, these pieces of DNA to ask which one of them has the relevant biological and behavioral activity, this fellow noted on our behalves that that was the first time that it had ever been done in fruit flies, to identify a gene with regard to what the gene does to the whole animal's attributes. Hadn't been done before in, in Drosophila. 